Let's get right into it. Ha ha. 100th Great Cup. On the 110th Great Cup, the Alouettes, Montreal Alouettes, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers never play ever in the Great Cup in 110 years. Do you believe that? Here we go. Let's have a little reminisce and go back a little bit here. Good for them, man. What a, what a fantastic Great Cup game. You go down to the top five, maybe the top three. What a victory. What a heroic victory by the Owls. The Montreal Alouettes, Cinderella team. That ended the Winnipeg Blue Bombers dynasty, didn't it? Look at this. Hoisting the Great Cup. Isn't that unbelievable? I think it's a good way to start Probably my last show this year for a while because the Grey Cup season, Grey Cup season is over. But I come back periodically if some there's news because I'm going to talk about three different topics in, on this session: uh, the 100th Grey Cup, uh, the intro I just did, and um, and also on uh, Randy and Brosie's uh, interview that I'm going to pull up here. Uh, that he did at a great cup about Halifax 10th franchise team. Okay? Uh, and also on uh, what's going on in Edmonton, where they're going to be up for sale. A community owned team, and I'll tell you why <laughs> they're going to be up for sale. Uh, so, uh, hey, you know, I'm back, and I hope you enjoyed the great cup, the 100th great cup, and, and, and whoever was there in Hamilton. Okay? Live, it must have been fantastic. You know, it must have been fantastic. But let's just, uh, okay, I'm just going to show you that soon. Okay? The interview with Randy and Brosie. Okay? And the Grey Cup in Hamilton. He was interviewed about and asked about expansion in the CFL in Halifax. Okay? That weasel. That bullshit pathological bullshit liar okay anyway we'll pin him again we'll call him out okay i got a new name for him too you stand by you're gonna like it okay so anyway uh what was interesting about that uh about the gray cup okay and and why i'm gonna call randy and brosie's get a new name right i i i it suits him really really well there's no doubt about it in my mind that Randy and Brosie, he looked very, like my son sent me a tweet, if you look when he's presenting the Grey Cup, he looks right sad, right? Listen, the guy belonged to the Canadian Players Association. He's in bed with the Canadian players. CEO have to happen to be a Canadian ratio player, like Randy and Brosie, right? You know? Uh, and they played in university, you know, in Manitoba for the Bisons, right? together and the CEO Miller, Brandy and Brosie's buddy, runs the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He's the CEO. So who do you think Randy and Brosie wants wanted to win? And he surely wanted actually Winnipeg to win four straight. Listen, I was at the Great Cup with my son, okay? Uh in 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 okay, the last Great Cup 
uh, would have been the 108th Grey Cup. Yes. Uh, so, and Keith Urban played halftime. And I enjoyed a lot better show in Green Day. I mean, everybody's talking about Green Day, but I thought their second song sucked and the guy's voice almost blew out his voice. But at least he was singing live. He couldn't even get through three, three songs, hardly. He struggled even his third song. But they only played four songs, 14 minutes. But anyway, also I want to make a correction before I get in to uh, the Great Cup in Calgary in, two, in 1008, one, one, sorry, one, 108th Great Cup in Calgary. Is I made a mistake last time I talked with Bolivar Mitchell. It was 24 in my last section, 24 years old in the Great Cup in BC against Allen Tiger Guts when that punt return okay, was called back by Banks. That, that, you know, I mean... Uh, it might have, might have been a penalty that time, but most times it's not in the CFL. They're just flag happy, you know, Canadian flag football league, you know. So anyway, that was in 2014, not 2004, okay? So anyway, you know what? Before I get into it, let's, before I talk about what happened in, in the 2004, get up, roll it up to the 100th and 10th grade cup. I want to, I want to crack this open because it's cold. I got a couple olds and I had a frosted. It's not so frosted anymore. But anyway, here's a toast to the Montreal West 2023 at the 100th Grey Cup game in Hamilton. Grey Cup champions for 2023. 13 years. Isn't that fun, funny? 13 years ago, 2010, when Calville, okay, you imagine, in Edmonton, in a full house. Uh, now they're talking about they want to build a smaller stadium, for, for, okay, because their stadium's too big. We're going to get into that as well. And what's going on in Edmonton where they're going to be up, well, the community-owned team, they want to sell, get a, get a, get an owner. I'm going to get into that. But cheers to the Montreal Alouettes and, and Jason Moss and Cody Fajardo and all the Montreal Alouette players. Mac, you were fantastic. Uh, stand back, that run was over 40 yards, I believe. I think that was 35 or 40 for sure. Uh, it was fantastic um, for a touchdown in the corner. And they tried to cheat. They tried to cheat on that as well. Uh, so I'm going to roll it right up to 110th. I just want to mention the one that, that, about the dynasty with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay, Randy and Brosie, you know, in bed with the CEO Miller. Uh, uh, and there's no doubt about the fix was in, in the 110th Grey Cup in Hamilton. There's no doubt about it. And in the playoffs, okay, in in the semi when the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won the Grey Cup. 108th Grey Cup, the fix was in against the Stampeders. There's no doubt about it, right? Uh, and Brosie was behind the whole thing, uh, just like he was in this Grey Cup. And I can point out three plays for sure that he cheated on. And he instructed the referees and the command center, he's a cheat. He's a cheat. I got a new name for him. You're going to like it. Randy and Brosie, a new name for him. Uh, anyway, so let's just roll it back here. Okay, I was happy for the Bombers. 29 years they win the Great Cup. I wanted the Bombers to win. So my son, 100th Great Cup in Calgary, we were there together. We wanted them to win. But I think uh, people talking about their arrogance, and I gotta say, too, uh, it's, it's it was starting to show. Okay, so they lost last year in the last minute to the to the Toronto Argonauts in in Regina, 109th Great Cup, and when the 110th Great Cup. Cheers, Mom. Alouettes, you deserved it. And here, hats off to Moss and Jody Fajardo. Imagine letting go by let go by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You know, through when even playing the last game, Cody Fajardo. When, when they, you know, they could have made the playoffs. You know, the writing was on the wall, and they're going to get rid of Moss too. And then Montreal had no owner. And then this billionaire comes along. Look how he jazzed up the the festival. Oh my God! He had everything. He had him in the Mercedes and Cody Fajardo in the Mercedes. I'm talking about the the prey when they won the Great Cup, okay, in Montreal, yesterday or, or Wednesday. Wednesday, sorry. It was unbelievable. They had Jody Fajardo and his wife and his kid in a red Mercedes. The new owner, two black Mercedes behind with Jason Moss and his family. There was a lot of fans, tens of thousands of fans on the streets. And I went to the stage when they lifted up the Grey Cup. They had the Grey Cup. They had actually three great big trucks with the players and, the, and their family and friends. It was unbelievable with the Grey Cup. They really mingled with the fans. The fans, tens of thousands, they fired them. Fire, I bet there was 10,000, 15,000 fans followed them. The prey. 
into where the stage area was, and there was must have been 10,000 people in there. It looked to be there was a lot of people there. Anyway, and then and then and then Moss was in a he was uh, uh, not Moss, but the, for uh, Danny Machocha, the general manager, and, and his family were in a Mercedes convertible too. And then the Owls, they had three big trucks, with a, you know, a fancy all all like Alouette colors and unbelievable, like. You know, champions on it. You know, like, you know, I know they're sensitive about the friendship, but come on, everybody's got to get along. We're a bilingual co country, right? But the majority of people speak English, English still have to respect the French language. And the Alouettes are now with a new owner, they're Grey Cup champions. You got to make it somewhat bilingual now. It's only show some respect and so forth. Uh, and they did have it on the, in the field, some of the smaller fields, but they, Randy Brosey had his ugly. And his ugly, ugly logo at center. You, did you see it? I mean, look at it. Like, there's over 70, 75, like, it's all gray. It's a dull. Like, even, they had it darker, though, because last time they had it lighter, like the logo, so it's terrible. They should actually make this darker gray. It actually looked a little better, but it, it was pitiful. It's brutal. It's it's just absolute. Actually, and bros, you should put your face on it at center field because you'd have a mustache, right? Seriously. Oh my God! It was terrible. It was terrible. That beautiful Helmut Tiger Cat 110th Grey Cup logo. It was fantastic. You saw it in the Grey Cup. Every and it's not at center field. You egotistical, Randy and Brosy, You're egotistical. You should have. Yeah, you should have had your face on that ugly, like gray day. The most boring looking ugly. I mean, the whole thing. It's just. It's just. It's a disgrace. That, that logo's the app, it's like the, an eyesore, worse than an eyesore. It looked terrible. It looked terrible. And you were so cheap, you couldn't even put like, the alouettes in blue, right? You made it in white, you're so cheap, right? Their colors are blue and red. You know, I know they have that logo and everything, but we got to get going because I want to get everything in. Twelve minutes are passing, and I want to get my, oh, there's the, yeah, the 104th Grey Cup, right? I think this is the 104th Grey Cup glass I'm drinking out of in Ottawa. Yes, I think maybe, yes. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> yeah, 92nd Grey Cup. I think it was 2008 or 2004. I, 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 I need my, I'm, I got my bifocals on, but, but the, the glass is a little fogged up. Okay, anyway, so anyway, let's get back to the game, the 110th Grey Cup game. I mean, I, I, like, it was unbelievable because the cheating that was going on was out of this world. It was out of this world. First of all, Kolaris, the, the Winnipeg Blue Mummers marched down. I, mean, I found Cody Fajardo way faster in the pocket than, for, for, I mean, Kolaris looks slow, seriously. Uh, and, but Montreal Alouette's defense was fantastic. It was fantastic. But do you remember the, the uh, and it flew the, that was down on the 20 yard line. But they threw the flag, okay? They said it was roughing the passer over Kolaris, uh, Zach Kolaris' head. And even even Soother on the replay showed that it wasn't. He was around the shoulder. He had him, he, he tackled him around here. He didn't have to tackle him up 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 here on the helmet area on the head area. That was a scam. And, and you notice the CFL, the refs, they they Moss didn't even chance to look at it. They 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 fast forward so fast to get that play okay in place so they could score touchdowns. Right there, they cheated him. They cheated him out of four points. That, it should have been three points because they stopped them on second down. And they weren't going to go for third down because they needed too, too, too many yards there. It wasn't like third and one or two. So it was an easy chip shot field. There, there was my rule, but I'm glad my rule wasn't in place for, for them, for the Bombers. Because I wasn't for the Bombers. I wasn't. I'm for the Montreal Alouettes. I'm always, and they're Cinderella. What a heroic victory, you know. I mean, one of the greatest great cups I've ever seen. So that was one cheat, Okay. The other, the other one, the stand back man, he was definitely, his knee wasn't down, but they had, to, they had to review it and so forth. But they took forever, forever, forever. I mean, when he scored that touchdown in the corner I, by the pylon, it took forever and ever to review. It's like they were going to alter, like overturn it, say he was like from the one to see the Bombers could stop him because the Bombers stopped the Alouettes at the end of the second half. But here's something I want to tell you. By the way, the shot, how, how they cheated a game, uh, uh, and Brosie and his gang, and Miller, uh, and, and, you know, and Brosie, the commissioner of the CFL. He could tell them what to do, right? It was very obvious, okay? Uh, when, when, 
On third down, I mean, they shouldn't have ran three plays up the middle, okay, on a one-yard line. They blew that. You don't do that. You show some creativity. You toss it out to stand back. I'd give the stand back three times. Toss it right, left, whatever. One, maybe one up the middle, okay, but you use you you lose yardage that way because you have to hand off two yards behind the line of scrimmage, or so. So anyway, but but I thought the third the third uh, chance uh, their backup quarterback. I thought he broke the plane and then he got pushed back. But they didn't show a shot of that over like an overhead. They had a spider cam. They didn't show an overhand shot. They had it. They didn't show it deliberately. But I from when I looked at looked his first push, he broke the plane. With the football, because in the football up here, he broke the plane. plane. You only have to boat break the plane by an inch, two inch, but oh no, 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 no. They, you know what? They they looked at it. No, it was, they stopped him. But guess what? On the third down, the Winnipeg Blue Bomber player looked like right in the center. His helmet and head was offside. He was over the one yard. It was a third and goal, the one yard. He was in that one yard, so. So he was offside. He's head, you can see. They put a picture up and they took it down. You can see it was blatant. He was offside. Deliberately not called by sleazebag Randy Ambrosi because he's in bed with Miller, okay, uh, uh, the CEO of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, you know, the whole thing was a scam from. They never even, even, even the referees ignored it completely. And th there was right there, the referees were right there looking at it. And they didn't call it. And they got stopped. Or they would have had three. They should have called. It was blatant. They were offside, so they had three more tries from the one. And they would have scored a touchdown. Right right at the end of the game. Right at the end of the... I mean, sorry, right at the end of the half halftime. Okay, it was seconds. You know, they, they would have had... They would have had to hurry it up, but they would I think, enough. Yeah, they would have. I think there was like... They had 20 seconds or something. Down a hat for the Montreal Alouettes. Don't mind me. I'm all excited. That's why I'm a bit off today. Okay? I had to rush to put this together because this is my last set for a while. And like I said, I may come back. Okay? So, I mean, it was a fantastic great cup. And Jody, for, Jody Fajardo played lights out. One interception, but it's a long pass. And he was throwing vertically downfield, too. But... I mean, Mac, that one-hand catch was unbelievable, but but he got intercepted in the long bomb, but, but it was a great throw, but what a great interception by Winnipeg. Well, get him credit on that one. But another big turning up point was Kolaros. I think he was down the 30-yard line or 25 or maybe even the 20. He, he threw a, a, like a big pass in the corner because, you know, in our game, from the 25 in the corner, you know, that's like it could be a 35-yard pass. And the Montreal went... Defensive back, I mean, he tipped one before, too, in the end zone. Uh, but he went up and made a, like, a, like a, a basketball leap, <laughs> a player, up in the, like he must have jumped up three or four feet, and he, and he caught it just before, just before, and just with his fingertips and came down and intercepted and prevented a touchdown from scoring. That, that was probably the game right there. Uh, because it was Lawler on the back end, just waiting. He couldn't believe it. Actually, he fell down. He couldn't believe it. He's mesmerized. It was fantastic. So, really, really big, big, big plays here. But the, but the cheating was going on. So, you know, let's look at, look at Randy Ambrosi. You know, he's the commissioner. They call him Commish, Commissioner Randy Ambrosi. Well, I got a new name for you, uh, Commissioner Randy Ambrosi. Okay, there it is. Cheaty slash Connie. Okay, and that's not a girl's name. I'll tell you what that means. Okay, Ratty and Brosy. So it's Cheaty, Connie, Ratty, and Brosy. You know why? C, Commissioner, but I slash it, put two words in it Cheat, Con Man. Okay, R for Randy. Okay, Rat. Okay, and then. <laughs> A and Brosy. So here's, there it is. Cheaty, Connie, Ratty, and Brosy. New name. <laughs> That's his new name. <laughs> Can you believe it? It didn't work in Brosy. It didn't work. Okay, it didn't work, you radical leftist. And that's exactly what you are. Because you tried, you destroyed, 
You de absolutely destroyed Edmund and Eskimos, and I'm going to get on in that too with, you, with Trudeau, that radical leftist crook. Trudeau and your scam to divide us, okay, and play the race card and try to get votes for Trudeau to take the Edmund Eskimos. Can you imagine? 75 year anniversary this year. Bring the name back. Bring the name back. Get rid of Randy and Brosey. Fire him. Fire Randy and Brosey. Yes, you rat. You cheat. You con man and Brosey. Get fire him. Fire him. He destroyed Edmund and Eskimos franchise. They're ready to fold, practically. I'm going to get into that at the end, and I'm going to show this weasel right here. we got to get going, because we haven't got a lot of time left. That's how fast an exciting show goes by like this. That's li listen to this guy about Halifax expansion. Listen to him. He's 60 years old, seven years on the job. With a franchise in trouble, or rumors of a merger with the XFL, or the pandemic. There's really no crisis this year. Problems, yes, which we'll get into, but no crisis, which must be weird in a wonderful way. It is a wonderful thing. And, you know, really it all started this uh, in February with Pierre Carl Palado taking over the Alouettes. And the way he did it, you know, he wanted a win-win arrangement with the league. We got that and it kind of set the league on a really positive footing heading into 2023. I think that was really the piece of the puzzle we needed. Still some issues, though. And it's certainly not you. Which you have touted since the beginning of your tenure. But it seems like there's no real progress in the Maritimes after all these years. Is it possible that you have to pivot somewhere else for a 10th team like, say, Quebec City? Yeah, you know, we are currently talking to a very interested, very capable potential owner. In the Maritimes? In the Maritimes. We've said we would pick up that conversation after Grey Cup. We will. But I have promised the governors that when we meet in December, I'll have an update. And I think there will be a point here that if you can't get it done now, we have to pivot. And that won't be being angry or frustrated with Atlanta Canada just to say maybe this wasn't our time, but we're going to give it one last kick at the can here and see if we can do it. But Quebec City is a very logical, very natural, and high potential place. We haven't had any formal discussions there, but a place that we really need to open some doors. So Touchdown Atlantic has been this very successful thing you've done every no year. No Touchdown Atlantic. Out in the Maritimes. That's what he says. The touchdown has almost become a brand in itself. Could we see a Touchdown somewhere else then, like Quebec City or somewhere else in the country? Well, in fact, that is very much the, the plan, is that that game should move around. It should help us to attract fans in different parts of the country. So those conversations are ongoing. In fact, I I expect we will have something to say about our touchdown series in the not too distant yeah. future. Yeah, and he's going to try to put it in Quebec City, right? We all know that. We all know that. Randy and Brosie, you're a bullshitter. You're a liar. You're a pathological liar. I'm going to open another beer because I don't. I only have like five minutes left, and but I'm going to be able to probably get it in. Randy and Brosie, you're you're a big bullshitter. Yeah, optimistic. Yeah. Listen, the reason you're talking Quebec City, like I said in my last sentence, because you don't have, listen, why don't you have, if, 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 listen, you're not doing anything. You're full of baloney, Randy and, Bo, and Bozy. You're full of baloney, and you eat too much baloney, too many donuts, Randy, baloney, and, and Brosy. You're full of baloney. You're full of shit. You're lying through your teeth. Listen. If you had a, a really potential owner for a, first of all, you need a stadium. There's no stadium. You're not doing anything. Where is he? But I found out who he is. I'll tell you who he is. He apparently he is, but hey, he's optimistic, but he really doesn't have a potential owner unless he has the conditional franchise side. And then you go to the premier, and then you go, and then you sit down with St. Mary's and, and the new like conditional franchise owner. They get a stadium deal done. But you don't have that. But a person that of interest that show is showing interest is Rob Steele from Steel Out. So I was writing that, so I checked that out. That's the guy. But you know what? And Brosie's doing nothing. I I went to, uh, stopped in. I went to the Musa game last to stop at St. Mary's with a couple of beer and it ran into Duck, Duncan Patterson, the quarterback for St. Mary's. He, he's finished now. It was his fifth year. He's injured all year practically. And he said there's nothing going on. And he talked about the Warriors grounds thing with Derek Martin and said this Mickey Mouse is an absolute joke. Eight thousand, eighty five hundred. Imagine little I mean little tiny little fabricated little stadium like for Derek Martin, the CPL team, the CPL will probably be out of business in, in two years. You know, it's a joke. So Randy Brosie, you're not doing nothing. 
you, you don't you don't have a conditional franchise. You, you don't have a, a stadium ready to go in Halifax of any kind. You're talking about, oh, a temporary permit. You don't have anything. You, you're not even down here having meetings. And I asked him, I asked uh, Justin Patterson, you know, 50 year quarterback for St. Mary's, this is, last, this is last year. I said, do you hear anything about meetings with Mr. Gray and the CFL? He said, nothing. There's nothing going on. And St. Mary's and Premier Houston that went to St. Mary's and, and the new, new new owner, but he, he actually, I, I told him who I thought it was, he said he agreed, he heard that. It was Rob Steele. But anyway, time is flying, and I, like, look at the time. And and th that's, that's he you know, Randy Ambrosi is, is bad news. He's got to go. He's got to be fired. And yes, okay, just to end off the session, it's too bad it goes so fast and i got to drink my beer, is that the Edmund Eskimos, by taking the name away, he destroyed the Edmonton Eskimos, and the Canadian race show is destroying the Edmonton Eskimos and destroying the CFL. 70% 70 of the teams are no good. And last time I, I forgot to mention Calgary St. Peter's were no good. So 70% of the teams, no good. Only three teams. Now the Alouettes are in there. Of course, he won the Grey Cup, so they're a good team. But, but listen, the Canadian race show and taking away the and Edmonton Eskimos name has destroyed the CFL and it's and and Edmund Eskimos are up for sale. They don't. They're running out of money. They don't have money, very much money left. Seven million. The community owned, and they had radical leftist liberals on the board too. In with Randy Brosie and Trudeau. They're the ones that destroyed Edmund Eskimos' name and destroyed the franchise. And and Randy Brosie got to be fired. Like I'm said, he's got to be fired. Okay. So anyway. Uh, they, they could fold, and the Canadian ratio is destroying the CFL and destroying the Edmund Eskimos and could fold the es Eskimos. The, the Canadian ratio could actually fold the CFL. they got to get rid of the Canadian ratio, they got to break the Canadian Players Union, and they got to get rid of Randy and Brosey, and they got to bring them in my CFL Red Zone Rule. So I want you to, to check Spider CFL Red Zone Rule face page out. Uh, 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 check, check it out. My full presentation is there that I made to the, the, the CFL on my Spider CFL Red Zone Rule. Okay, and, and, and we'll see you soon. I hopefully probably something come up on, on, on the Halifax franchise here in Halifax. So I'll probably, there'll be some, probably some news, probably not very good news, but I'll have it for you. Take care. Spider, Spider.